Hello and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. We are going to look at a layout swap app that I put together. This is a pretty basic application, but what it does is it allows a user to choose their layout. This is going to be part of a larger project that I'm putting together, but this part was really fun and I wanted to share it with you guys and maybe you'll find it useful. So I'm gonna make the source code also available in my repository. The link will be in the description of this video. But what we can do here is the user can choose how they want their layout to be, and you can see that everything adjusts depending on that choice. Again, I am gonna be add adding some other uh, choices that a user can make there in the future, but for now, this is what I have. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a slightly different format video. I'm not going to code anything with you today. I'm just going to walk through what is there, uh, kind of pointing out some key pieces of functionality, and then again, make the source code available. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this format. If you would rather I code along with you, uh, let me know that. If you prefer this, then let me know that as well. So let's get to it. Inside of source, I have a lib directory with just two files, a modal.svelte, which is more like a wrapper, and a navbar.svelte. In my routes, I just have a layout and a page. And then I have a stores.js that has uh, just two pieces of state required to make this happen. There is, however, quite a bit of CSS involved. You'll see that each file has uh, quite a few CSS classes. So I'll show you guys those. So we have quite a few CSS classes for everything here. And the plus page.svelte actually <laughs> only has an H1 and an H2, so nothing really going on in there. So let's take a look first at the modal.svelte. Uh, and again, this is more like a wrapper component because when you implement this, you still have to uh, add your content inside. So what we have here is a, a script. The script is importing our store, uh, show modal. Now all of that is doing is, uh, that's holding the value of whether or not this is open or closed. The dialogue itself is being bound to this variable. I have that going on here, bind this dialog. And then this little reactive statement, if the dialog is set, meaning if this has been bound, and that, very, that value in the store for show modal is true, then we dialog.showModal, and that's gonna go ahead and open the modal, or dialog, however you wanna say it. A couple of other pieces that are pretty cool here, uh, we're using this on, on close, so if the dialog closes, we wanna make sure to update that state. And if we are uh, clicking ourselves, we want to close the dialog. Uh, the content inside is making use of slots, so we have a header slot and a regular slot, and where that's coming into play is inside of the modal, when I click this button, uh, this is the header, and this is the content, and then we have the close button. So that's pretty cool. The lines are just horizontal rules, uh, no problem there. Because we are having that uh, on-click self, we wanna make sure that we stop the propagation here so that it doesn't trigger that close. And then we have an autofocus button, and you'll notice these little comments. Uh, these are accessibility concerns. Uh, accessibility is something that is super tricky to do inside of a modal. Uh, and in fact, this is the exact same way that the uh, SvelteKit documentation would implement this as well, because there really is not a accessible way to make a modal uh, in the wild. Uh, this is pretty much as close as you can get. So inside of my uh, navigation bar, let's go take a look at that. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're importing, again, that show modal value, that store value, and also a layout value. And the layout value is what's containing which choice a user has made in the modal as far as which style they would like to have their navigation bar showing in, top or side. And then we're flopping the classes. Everything has a base class. 
In this case of the navigation bar, it's a nav base. And then we have other classes. Uh, this is a super helpful thing in Svelte that you have available. You can have a base class and then multiple classes like this where we're saying class, top, and then inside of brackets, some sort of value. And if this evaluates to true, it's going to assign this class to that element. And you can have as many of these as you'd like, which is awesome. You also can have an array of classes, but I'm not using any of that here. Uh, the other thing here is the button. And all that we're doing in the button is setting that store value to true if somebody clicks it. We open the modal, and that's pretty much it. The most of our magic is happening in our layout. So inside of our layout, we are importing the modal wrapper, the navigation bar, and again, the layout store, the writable store. Uh, these other things are things I'm adding, so these are, do not come into play for what you're seeing. We do have a piece of local state called a layout form, and that is just the form that lives inside of the dialog box, the modal window, or again, however you want to say it. I have a function that I'm using to set the layout, and it's again using, I find this super helpful myself. I really enjoy having that straightforward way of binding uh, HTML elements to variables, because then you can make use of them so easy in any place that you need to. So what this is, this function is what's setting our, our store value based off of what's happening in this form. The form is inside of the modal window, and I have the form bound to that piece of local state called layout form. So anytime the value changes inside of this form, and this is what that implementation looks like. Anytime the value changes inside of this form, it runs this handle form change function. And all that's doing is setting the layout value to be the new layout. So flopping it back and forth. There's probably a better way to do this and I probably will change this in the future. Uh, this is just something that I did pretty quickly. The modal wrapper that I'm importing here, this is how you make use of it. So it takes children, uh, as you could see by the slots I had. So I have an H2 that I'm putting in the header slot, and then the form, and that's gonna go in the default slot. And let's go take a look at that again. So that layout option uh, text is coming from that H2 that we assigned to the header slot. And then the rest of the form is going inside of the default slot since it's not named, that's where it's putting that. So that is all of the magic. There is some additional things here that I have, but this, again, this is for some other functionality I'm adding. Uh, the last thing required to make this happen lives in our stores.js, and that is just the two pieces of writable state, the show modal boolean value, and then the writable layout, and that is the value that's flopping back and forth uh, depending on which one they choose in the dialog box. So this is my layout swapping app. Uh, let me know what you thought of this format of just talking through each file rather than typing things out. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to be adding on to this uh, very soon. I hope that you found this video helpful. Comment below with what you think of this format and also what you think of this project. Take a look at the repository and get your hands on it, play around. And as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.